Do you have a problem with fear, doubt, and worry? Does fear, doubt, and worry control your life? Does it stop you from doing all the stuff you love to do? Is your life really small because you're too afraid to take the risk of going after your dreams? Well, in this video, we're gonna cover that. And I'm gonna go over the five simple steps you can use to change this area of your life actually pretty quickly. I thought about it in my life. I was filled and riddled with fear, doubt, and worry as a child. I was afraid to leave the house. I didn't like to go to school. I'd actually sneak home from school sometimes because I just didn't wanna be there. I was super antisocial and I didn't like being around people. I grew up in a really abusive household with lots of yelling and screaming, and it had a lot to do with me being actually really afraid of other people. So I decided I needed to do something about it. So after high school, I got rid of all the Dungeons and Dragons, I got rid of the video games, I, I got rid of everything that kept me inside hiding because I was gonna create a whole new life and uh, I was gonna get out there and do something about it. And honestly, not much happened. I studied a lot of books, I learned a lot of stuff, I became analytically really smart when it came to personal growth. People were growing like crazy around me because I'd give them advice and they go apply it, but I wasn't changing. And about my mid 30s, something happened that really caused a big shift. Some of you might be thinking that's when I met my teacher that taught me how to get out of my head, but there was something that happened before that. And it was the fear of becoming basically a loser and not going anywhere with my life, being depressed, alone, and sad became greater than the fear of taking action. And I started to get into action. For a lot of you, you're just not in action and you gotta get into action. And the big mistake I made early on was I got into too much action too fast. So these five steps are gonna help you to get into just the right amount of action for you to have fun and change your fear into something that feels really good so you grow naturally and easily. Okay, so let's get into those five steps. But before I do, I wanna invite you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. I don't want you to miss any of the valuable content. I'm really working hard to bring you some amazing content over the next few months. You're gonna feel a little change to the, the videos, but they're gonna get better and better and better. And with that said, make sure to subscribe. Also hit that bell notification and give us a comment. Where have you been struggling with fear in your life? Where have you been held back? What's been holding you down? What's, give me something real. I really wanna hear it in the comments. Now with that said, let's dive into these five steps. Number one, you gotta learn to reframe. There's all kinds of teachings on the internet about reframing, but reframing is really simple. It's about looking at fear or or asking yourself questions, that's a better way to put it, asking yourself questions about the fear itself that changes the way you look at it. So for example, um, I would ask myself a question. I had a good friend, his name was Daniel. He was really good with women. And I would sit there and I would imagine back in the day, if I was gonna try to approach a pretty girl because I was working on my dating, right? And I would say, I wanna approach that beautiful woman, but my mind would say, no, she'll think I'm a creep. She'll think I'm a loser. She won't, she won't like me. But then I'd say, well, Anytime I've ever seen Daniel approach a woman, was he rejected like that? Never, not once. Matter of fact, how many times have I ever been rejected like that in my life? Well, not once. Do I know anybody that was rejected like that? No. Do I know anybody that actually approaches women and succeeds? Well, yeah. So can I think of any time they were rejected? Well, no. So I start to say this stuff that challenges. I ask myself mind questions that challenges the belief, starts to break it down. Is there anybody in the world that's really good at approaching women? Yeah. Was there anybody in the world that started out terrible and got really good? Well, yeah. Have I ever started out terrible at something and got really good at it later? Well, yeah. And these questions have obvious yes answers in the end. They start to actually wake up your mind and start to change the way you see things. What this does is it shakes the belief loose and starts to break it up. So that's step number one, learn to reframe. Tons of courses on the internet. You just saw some examples and just ask yourself those questions. Questions that, that you know uh, are gonna lead to this opening a possibility. And, and if you just go look up one of these courses on reframes, it will show you how to do it. Now with that said, let's dive into number two. Realize that true courage is the real power. Courage is the power. You see, courage is the polarity to uh, fear. If you understand the law of polarity, you can't have an up without a down. You can't have male without female. You can't have masculine without feminine. You can't have dark without light. It's, it's unfailing. And if you look around, you realize that polarity is everywhere. So fear always has an element of courage attached to it. So if you walk up to a beautiful woman, you go quit your job, you go start a new business, you go apply for a new job and there's fear there and you do it from fear and identified with the fear, feeling like the fear is real, then yeah, it's gonna be terrifying. It's gonna create pain in your nervous system. It's gonna cause you to suffer a little bit. And then the next time you go out, you're not gonna to wanna to step into that fear. 
But if you start to approach fear from the as the other side of the coin, the aspect of courage, this idea that, yeah, courage is there to help me face fear, then it's going to change the way you look at fear. The more you become identified with what courage feels like rather than the fear, the better you'll handle the fear, the more fun you'll have with the fear, the, the more you'll penetrate the fear and start to break it up. You'll start to see it differently. Have you ever experienced courage? I bet you have. I bet there's something out there in your life that maybe you were terrified to do, but you did it. You did it. And after you did it, there was a rush or an exhilaration. That is courage. There's a sense of adventure. There's a sense of turn on. There's a sense of excitement. There's a, se a sense of decisiveness. In fear, there's nervousness. There's worry. There's doubt. You can just look up the synonyms for these words. Uh, adventure is a, is a type of courage. Choice is a type of courage. Confidence is in courage. Courage has this... Um, it's almost like think of any movie that, that has a really good adventure story and the character that's scared has to find his courage and step into tension and he uh, and in the finding of his courage he comes alive it's called the hero's journey and that's what courage does courage helps you to face the fear so developing an understanding of what courage feels like is huge and you do that by looking up what is courage really synonymous with i'm going to share with you a few more just so you understand Let's go to fear first, okay? So if we look at fear, I've got a whole list of, of words that help you to understand fear better. Anxious, apologetic, foreboding, frantic, guilty, hesitant, overwhelmed, nightmare, nausea, inhibited. If you feel these words, feel how much they make you feel pain inside. You don't wanna take action. They kind of hold you back. Now let's go look at a few of the words from courage. Courage, how about able? active, confident, competent, creative. And if we use the ones that really surmount the fear, it's um, daring, decisive. How about uh, determined? How about I can? How about independent? How about initiative, uh, invincible? These are the types of words that are more synonymous with courage. My favorite is adventure, having a sense of adventure like Captain Jack Sparrow swinging from the mast of the pirate ship. So. Start to look at fear from the aspect of courage and you're gonna have a lot more power over the fear, okay? And if you wanna copy, I have a huge list of the, of the emotional scale based on the revealing process here. If you want a copy of that list, uh, there'll be a link in the uh, description of the video and uh, we, can get you a, we can get you a copy of that list so you can check it out. There's a lot of emotions on there, so just focus on those two in the beginning. Now let's dive into number three. You gotta feel the energy rise up inside you when you feel fear. It's gonna rise up and then it's gonna push you back away from the thing you're afraid of. You ever feel that wall that comes up when you're afraid or that, oh no, I can't do it? Well, that's energy rising in your body. Why do you think evolutionary that energy is there? It's not to push you back, it's to push you forward. For example, this is the polarity again, but not in a, not a conceptual way, an energetic way. So you feel that resistance to energy, then you ask yourself and you look inside, could I switch that energy to energy that I use to push me forward? The body's giving me all this extra energy. What if I said, fuck it, I'm gonna go forward anyways. And I feel the power of that energy driving me towards what I want. I feel it making me more alert, more aware, more awake. And I start to see it that way. And as you calm down and get comfortable with that extra energy, as you get more and more comfortable taking action in the face of fear, no matter what it is, um, then what you're going to notice is with time, that energy is going to get clearer and clearer. It's going to be more usable, like a free flowing energy when all the kinks come out, like almost like a hose that's kinked and it's pushing. And then every kink comes out, the hose gets more into a flow and then eventually you're in a flow state and you're out there socializing, you're applying for jobs, you're going for your dream and you can feel that energy pushing you forward rather than holding you back. Now let's dive into number four to help you to understand how to calibrate this energy because as you get more and more into courage, into this energy, and you start calibrating this energy, that's when real change is gonna happen. How do we do that? How do we calibrate this energy? It's really simple. You create a courage journal or you create a courage tracking sheet. And I'm gonna recommend you start with a week and you want a minimum of three weeks, preferably four weeks or longer. And it's very simple what you do. You're gonna list a minimum of two things you're gonna take action on each day where you have to step into courage. You have some fear and you're gonna step into courage. Two things, that's it. If you wanna do more, do more. If you wanna do three or four, you can, but two is the minimum. If you wanna have a stretch day once a week where maybe for a half hour, you just step into one thing after another, I've done that, it feels fantastic. And uh, you can do that too. Now, the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to, uh, before you take the action that is, you're gonna calibrate that tension. You're gonna say, okay, on a scale of one to 10, I'm gonna take this action. 
okay, if I take this action, that's a 10. That's my head's gonna blow up if I take this action, it's so scary. Then don't take that action. If it's approaching a pretty girl or, or uh, sending a text to that guy you like if you're a girl or asking a raise from your boss and that's a 10, then maybe that's not where you start. I want you to pull the number back. Now, some of you might be thinking, I'll pull it back to a seven. No, I want you to pull it way down for that first week especially. Pull it down to a two, three, or four. Easy stuff. Twos and threes are great. Even ones can be good for a bit, a bit. And write it down. Write down exactly what it is. Asking my boss for a raise. Maybe that's a three or a four. And you walk up, you do it. And then afterwards, well, first off, you're going to walk up, you're going to do it. You're going to find it so easy to do that you're not going to get that huge amount of resistance. It's going to be easier to move that energy that was pushing you back towards pushing you forward because you're like, I can handle this. And then afterwards, you're going to feel your confidence grow. You're going to feel this sense of accomplishment because you didn't do something that was too hard for you to do. And then I want you to celebrate that accomplishment. I want you to write something down in your journal about how good you felt, which how you grew, what you learned from it, why that was awesome. And I want you to do that at least, like I said, twice a day, working with those twos, threes, and fours. So every day, you're not stepping into so much tension you're associating with pain. You're stepping into a little amount of tension, getting a good workout from it, like that perfect amount of tension at the gym, the perfect right weight. Like you gotta pick just the right weight to get the growth. That's what you're doing here. And then your body feels amazing. It feels alive, it feels alert. And if you do this every day at the end of the week, it's going to become addictive. You're going to start to get more and more addicted to stepping in attention. What's going to happen is fives and sixes are going to come down to threes and fours. And then eventually seven, eights and nines are going to come down. That 10 eventually is going to be a five. And if you do this every day, just like lifting weights, you're going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And inside of three weeks a month, you're going to see a huge difference. Now, the reason you're writing the notes down about what you did and how you grew is so that every night, right before you go to bed, you can read them. You can read those notes and you can then relax, fall asleep, dreaming or fantasizing about all the tension you stepped into for the day, for the week, for the month, seeing all the growth and the success. And, and the book will remind you where you started and how much you've grown because we forget so fast when we're growing. And when you look back and wow, look at where I started, look what I'm doing now. That's gonna be a huge celebration in a week, a month, three months if you go that long and you're gonna feel so much better. Now, step number five, this is more of a bonus step, but it's fun for people that are competitive or, or need something to really push them along. Just start scoring each, uh, each time you step into courage. Give it a, a, a number, one, two, or three. Let's say you're going for 100 points and a one is, hey, that was pretty easy. A two is, ooh, I pushed myself, but I felt great. And three was, wow, I really stepped into that tension. I owned it. I was really proud of myself. I love myself more for it. And if you get, uh, too so high that it, that it feels almost like that was too much, then then that's also going to be a one. That's not going to be a, a, a three. A three is when you hit that sweet spot where you really feel you grew. And then when you hit whatever your goal is, maybe you do it in 50s all the way up to 100 or 25s up to 100, you have a goal you want to hit, you give yourself a reward. I got to 25. Awesome. I'm going to um, I'm going to eat that that my favorite food. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go get a massage. I'm going to go uh, hang out with my buddies and we're going to celebrate tonight and have a beer together. Whatever it is that makes you feel amazing inside. Maybe you have a favorite TV show and you got to hit 25 to watch another episode. Something that really rewards you for stepping into all that action. And, uh, and then the last thing, if you got multiple friends that want to do this with you, I think it'd be awesome. And then you all compete. Who's going to get to 25 first? Who's going to get to 50 first? Who's going to get to 100 first? And then... You can all bet money, you can have a competition, you know, somebody wins something, whatever it is, whatever makes you feel excited to take action and step into tension and feel a positive reward at the end. Notice what I'm doing here. I'm associating everything with good emotions, with feeling good. I'm not just saying take action you'll, and you'll grow. I'm saying take action, calibrate it just right and learn to feel good and then build it a little bit at a time. That's exactly how we lift weights, right? If you go lift weights and you lift too much weight, you get hurt. You lift too little weight, you actually feel like you didn't do much. So I wanna invite you into this idea of learning to calibrate this tension, keeping this journal, keeping it as something that you can look back on years from now and say, look, this really changed my life. Because it will, if you actually do it. Now I'm gonna share one more story and then we're gonna close out this video. I had a guy I gave a talk to in Romania many years ago. There's a whole group of people actually. And this one guy did this. Back then we called it a confidence journal. And he went on, bought a super nice leather bound journal with a, with really cool graphics on it. And he began to do this exact exercise. 
Then about two or three months later, I got an email from him and he said, this changed my life. He says, I've got an $8,000 a year, year old raise. This had to be like eight years ago too. Uh, I've got a new girlfriend. I've got a new home. We're moving in together. My whole life has changed because every day I stepped into a little bit more tension. I want to thank you. And he sent me a picture of the, of the binder and, and everything. And, and he was so happy. So if you're ready to have a huge change in your life, this could be the thing that does it. Okay. So with that said, make sure to watch my last video if you haven't watched it already. It's all about the difference between masculinity and confidence. And that'll help with this whole process of understanding how to build courage too. And uh, it's an old video I did from a long time ago, but it's a powerful talk. So make sure to check it out. There'll be a link somewhere in this video. Um, and, uh, and make sure to check out thefearlessman.com for all my online products, my revealing mastery course, which could actually be an addendum to this, how to really release deep stored emotions and stories. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully you have a beautiful day. And with that said, remember true courage actually equals true freedom. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.